TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. But by the time you see this, we won't be, man. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Uh, if you do want to catch a live or catch the previous lives and fast forward through them and things of that nature, just go to twitch.com. Yeah, you know, enter that down there. That's my username. Um, and you can do that. Don't forget we got Patreon and we got merch as well. The link to everything is down in the description below. This is Trap LaRosse. LaRose. LaRosse? Is it Rose or Ross? It's Ross. Okay. Aussie Drillers. Aussie Drills Bloody Gang War. 1-4 first 21st District. Okay. It was sponsored by Wonder Street. Getting their hands on me. Oh. When I hear the phrase broad day booting in Australia, I tend to think of this. Because on the <laughs> streets of Sydney, Sorry. Australian drillers, much like their British counterparts, tend to have a bit of trouble getting their hands on firearms. Meaning that modern day Aussie drillers have to. Mm, I think it's easier in Australia, right? Rely on their shanks and shivs to get the. Australia built blocks, didn't they? Job done. Now, I've not yet had the privilege of visiting Australia myself, and I know it's easy to assume that Australia land is nothing more than cans of Fosters, kangaroos in pouches, and shrimps on Barbies. But today, I'm here to tell you that in the west of Sydney, it's more Foster homes, shanks in pouches, and barbecue pokers headed straight for your fucking eyeballs. Yes, historically, Australia has been home to a host of gangsters, far beyond the amusing antics of Chopper Reed. In fact, gangsters from Southeast Asia, China, and Vietnam have all had a presence in the country since the formation of the lucrative Aussie drug markets in the 1980s. Gang warfare that actually culminated in the assassination of the anti-drug politician in Australia, John Newman. And then of course you've got your biker or bikey gangs, two-wheeled outlaws like the banditos held. These are the most things I hear about in Australia right here. These type of gangs. Angels or Gypsy Jokers, the likes of whom were truly wild, being responsible for some of the most insane instances of Aussie street violence, including a 1984 shootout that left seven people dead, known as the Milpera Massacre. It was actually that incident itself that even led to stricter gun laws in New South Wales. But you know your boy TLR is a driller at heart. So in today's video, we're going to be focusing on the Aussie youth gangs, who would eventually move on from doing dirt in the street to pioneer the Aussie drill music movement. Specifically, we're going to be looking at the youth gangs in Sydney's inner West and Greater West, whose smaller sets would battle it out on the streets of Sydney for years, before eventually spawning two of the most exciting Aussie drill crews in history. 1-4 hailing out of the Greater West, and 21 District hailing from the Inner West. These specific crews were made up of the rapping young men who had emerged and survived the dangerous skirmishes between the Inner West and the Greater West gangs, with a significant- Well, her 1-4, of course, they rap. 21st District? number of the lads from both of these groups being Pacific Islanders, which if you didn't know refers to an ethnic group of people hailing from around 80 different islands in the Western Pacific, many of whom's ancestors were born- Ain't that the rock? Brought to Australia in the 19th century to work in sugar fields, with the subsequent generation of young Pacific Islanders going on to be historically profiled by Australia's police, as well as Asian immigrants mainly based on assumptions and stereotypes derived from the criminal gangs that had come overseas to Australia. So growing up as a young islander in Australia, much like marginalised groups in the US or the UK, that would make you a target for police brutality, okay. with members of 1-4 even recounting being beaten black and blue by the cops as early as age 14. In fact, the underrepresentation of Pacific Islanders in Aussie media plays a big part in making Aussie drill so exciting. Because until the Aussie drillers made it cool, these young men from these unique backgrounds were extremely underrepresented in Aussie media. You know, unless you count the brown face wearing character from Summer Heights High, Jonah from Tonga. Cringe. Anywho, much like we've seen in the hoods of Chicago, London, and New York all around the world, at a certain point, these underrepresented gangsters from the hood managed to come up with a cohesive group identity. And once we saw people coming out of these situations getting good at rapping, we began to see Aussie gang and street culture flourish, getting a voice through music. And from observing... Chicago gave everybody a voice to be heard with the drill. The likes of 1-4 and 21 District, even us UK drillers, have been delighted to learn some of the colourful slang of these scenes. It's not just the style, it's the, the, the personnel. When you heard Chicago drill and you heard some people that you heard, before that you would think you'd never hear this person. Like, how he rapping? Like, what the... <laughs> but like that alone let you know like oh yeah let me go let me go try 
the savages. I mean, some of the best exports from Australia these days are delightful insults for your ops, like the word gronk. But around here, a real filthy word to call your enemies like dogs and gronks, you know what I mean? You've also got the phrase lads, which unlike in England, where it tends to mean obnoxious university sports team wanker, in Aussie street culture, lads or eshes formally refers to a persecuted oh, Australian lad hailing from oh. the hood, most likely to be seen wearing sportswear, being working class and potentially up to no good. This is more akin to a chav in the UK, or perhaps at a stretch, what the Americans might call <clears throat> trailer trash. And of course you've got... <laughs> Urchers, which is essentially a lad who is out to make money illegally or by any means necessary. Hell, we all know what- Wait a, wait a minute, Trap, wait. But it feels like just to be a young lad trying to urch a little money doesn't matter where you're from in the world. So lads, let's take a look-see at some of the little urchers who are making a few Aussie- I don't feel like a lad is equivalent to a, a trailer trash. What did you, I don't think that's the equivalent. In my personal, I'm from, I'm from, I'm here. Oh, well, that's not it. This drill business. But first, a word from our. All right, all right, all right. On. I get that man. Whole time, Trap has never used Fillmore. I guarantee you. NF14 is a coalition of Aussie street gangs based in Sydney's Greater West, with a particular presence in Mount Druitt, also known as Mountie or Mountie County, with the collection of numerous street crews coming from this area, sometimes being referred to as the Mountie County Coalition. And what makes us a dual group is that we actually do what we rap about. And true, it's home, you know? Yeah, it's a big place. It's the trenches. And it's worth pointing out, as is often the case with these stories, Mountie County is indeed the suburb of Sydney with the highest amount of gun crime. But it's from this collection of street lads repping NF14 that spawned the groundbreaking Aussie drill crew 1-4. Oh, and while Aussie four. rappers were already kind of doing bits in their native country in the 2000s in the form of lad rap, it seems plainly obvious that over the past few years, mainly out of sheer high quality music and frequent output, that 1-4 have frankly managed to become the most significant and successful Rap. But I haven't heard from one four since like in a minute. Like it's been like three, four years since I heard a song from the based movement to ever Maybe come two, out three. of Australia. The main members of one four include JMs, Lex, YP, Spenny, and Selly. And because one four are from Mount Druitt or Mountie County, which is in a twenty seven postcode, they're known to frequently throw up and shout out the twenty seven number. Mount uh, Druitt, Spain, Spenny, and it's taken us there. Numerous lyrics from 1-4 suggesting they're down to ride for that 277. Oh, from 2017, 1-4 burst onto the scene with their track Ready For War, heavily inspired by Call Me A Spartan by the Harlem Spartans. That was followed up by the track What You Know, which featured a gang of Aussie lads that were so menacing, I nearly did the dash from my computer screen just watching it. Hey, when you- <laughs> Trap, stop trolling. Real this hard, ain't no one gonna tell you how to use stairs. <laughs> so since they burst onto the scene and introduced their native country to the booming, hard sounds of the UK and New York drill, 1-4 essentially taken over and become the pioneers of the entire Aussie drill movement. Again, with a lot of their appeal essentially deriving from the fact that they were the first crew of Pacific Islanders to rap proudly about their lives in their native Aussie accents. And I've got to say, there's just something about hearing that Aussie accent over a hard UK drill beat that just sounds so cold. But it wasn't just their music that was pioneering, because they were also using their music videos to introduce the Aussie public to their slick street fashion style too. With a lot of their music videos around this time essentially looking like adverts for the Foot Locker prison range. So with all of these lads out here rocking more menacing sportswear than a Sports Direct jumble sale, one fall with their unique sound and Eche fashion style that hadn't been seen by See, the- this is why people don't be liking you, Trap. I think you funny because I understand the social media, but a lot of people be thinking you'd be poking fun at them and they'll be taking that lightly. But hey, you know, I'm sure you move everywhere with security. The streets before, 1 4 quickly became the coolest thing going, proving to other disadvantaged young men from the same areas that there is indeed another way to make it out of these streets. So from here, 1 4's sound continued to progress, and they would go on to drop other big releases like the track Shanks and Shivs, a song and video which was hailed by many as potentially the first glimpse that the public had truly gotten of real life for lads on the streets of the Greater West. The first track they put out, the Shanks and Shivs, no one had seen anything like that in Australia. No one had seen young islanders or young ethnics in general represent their experience of the street. And Shanks and she 100%, before I even did a, before I found out about 1-4, before I did anything Australian, I was completely oblivious to any crime in Australia. I thought y'all was known for Steve Irwin, the Outback, Huntman spiders, kangaroos, um, 
That honestly, that's it, one hundred percent. Like I didn't know there was no type of activity out there. Like I, I, the, I was in the same category as Hawaii. Like, like we didn't think there was no activity in Hawaii either, but apparently there is. I mean, like that's ignorant for us to think, but like. Followed by even more bangers like The Message, Spot the Difference, and Lads in the Hood. And at a certain point, 1-4's unique style of Aussie accented drilling would capture the attention of drill and rap reaction channels all over the world, setting them up nicely for viral success. I never knew those drillers in Australia. I, like, I didn't know they exist over there. Did he not beef from the sports I'm fighters and that? Eventually, off the back of all of this energy, 1-4 would bang themselves some mainstream success with the song in the beginning, getting 1 million views on YouTube in the first 48 hours and going number 39 on the Aussie charts. And from here, they were on a roll, dropping numerous follow-up songs which would hit the charts. Like Welcome to Prison, Say It Again with Big ASAP, ASAP Berg, their emotional love letter to Mountie County, Home and Away, and the more pop-leaning radio hit My City, featuring fellow rapping Aussie. 2020 was the last time I heard of them. That's four years ago. 2020 was four years ago? Jesus. Twink, the Kid Leroy. Basically, you'd be lying if you said that 1-4 didn't sing. Is that Ben Simmons? Is that Ben Simmons? That's Ben Simmons, am I too? And did put drilling at the forefront of Aussie music and rap culture. But of course, when you're creating a successful scene like this completely from scratch, it doesn't take long for other people to see what's going on and try and get in on your trap. And while their musical legacy is much less well established than One Fours, it would be a travesty to overlook the musical development of their most hated ops, the Inner West's 21 District. 21 District refers to both a coalition of street gangs. I was just talking to my brother about this, man. <laughs> hey, listen, if you make it in the rap game, you're almost doing your ops a justice by speaking on them in raps. Because if they also rap, what is the what are the what is the general consumer gonna do? Man, who is he talking about? Let me go see. Let me go listen. And if they actually good. You just put them on. In the inner west of Sydney, as well as an Aussie drill music group made up of members coming out of these areas. Their name actually comes from postcodes in Sydney that start with 21, including Guildford 2161, which was actually home of the first KFC in Australia, thanks Wikipedia, Marylands 2160, Blacktown 2148, Smithfield 2164, and Cabramatta 2166. Sometimes this coalition of street crews is referred to as the Inner West Brotherhood. Furthermore, subgroups exist as part of this coalition, such as G40, hailing from Guildford 2161. In fact, G40 has actually even been shouted out in 21 District's music. And it's also worth mentioning that as part of the Inner West Coalition, other groups like 3T exist who have apparently even been rapping all the way back to the 2000s and would even be out here making diss tracks to their Greater West Ops in 2010 before the Aussie Drill movement took off and 1-4 became the big dogs in the game. The reality is that the rise of 21 District, the rapping crew, is intrinsically linked to 1-4's rise because 21 District's breakout track, The Reply, is itself a direct response to 1-4's See what I'm saying? See? 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 You can put them on. Track the message, which actually included a diss referring to a murdered 21 district member. In fact, the feud between these two crews and their related coalition of gangs permeates the music on both sides with numerous lyrics from 21 districts, the reply, referring to riding out on the ops. And the same can be said for 21 districts, second biggest track still here, featuring numerous references to attempting to drill it on the other side. To be fair, 21 districts rap unit haven't quite reached the level of success that 1-4 have pioneering the sound, but they've certainly shown a great deal of promise and deserve a lot of respect. The star members of 21 District's rapping crew include Mac 11. 11, Ron Gotti, Jay Lex, A1, and Malik. So now you know the crews, the music they make, and the sides they rep. Now we can take a closer look at some of the wild incidents that have gone down on the streets of Sydney between these two warring groups of lads. Searching for a new home? Let Not gonna lie, trap. <laughs> Excellent timing. Just like we've seen with the gangs of Chicago and London, often the origins of these deadly gang feuds are as simple as teenage schoolyard scraps, which unfortunately, as members get older, escalate into shootings and stabbings, as made clear by JMs from 1-4. Clearly, tit-for-tat violence has been going on in Sydney's inner and greater west for decades, so we can't necessarily trace back every single incident that's gone on between these two groups of lads. But what we can do is take a closer look at some specific high-profile incidents that have made significant contributions to the beef and the music between 21 
1 District and 1 4. An early one was a 2011 incident at a Westfield shopping centre where apparently members from Inner West's G40 had planned a 100 man deep fight with their ops BYOW, bring your own weapons. Now, this skirmish was being arranged on Facebook of all places, and it's no surprise then that eventually the cops caught wind of it and were able to arrive at the scene just after things had kicked off, arresting 13 people at the scene and recovering numerous homemade weapons and baseball bats. Police have warned they'll be making dozens more arrests after a mass brawl at a shopping centre in Sydney's west. Now all they gotta do is go back, tr follow the, the digital fingerprint and catch everybody. Two gangs armed with homemade weapons stormed Westfield's Mount Druitt shopping centre last night after pre-arranging the fight on Facebook. Fighting broke out at the Mount Druitt station after one group got off a train and were met by the other, all of Pacific Island origin. Before long, a wild melee involving up to a hundred. Not gonna lie, it's reminding me of hooliganism when he said hopped off the train and, and a melee ensued. Like, that's like... Spilled through the doors of the Westfield shopping centre. 13 arrested, including four juveniles. Police expect to make more arrests. At a certain point, these organised brawls escalated to stabbings and shootings. In April 2012, five drive-by shootings were reported in Sydney in a 48-hour space, with these taking place around North Mead in the Greater West, with the audio from the news report of those drive-by shootings being used many years later as the intro for 21 District Tracker Reply. Now, Sydney police say that there That's were... top-level negativity by 21 five District. Drive -by by shootings in the city overnight. Our reporter Jason Nom joins us from North Mead in the city's west. Um, so five shootings within uh, four and a half hours, um, yet, you know, it just but the spate of shootings just don't seem to be ending. From here, things were not sweet in the years that followed. People have been found beaten to death in Mount Druitt as early as 2015, with it having been suggested on social media that the man killed was indeed NF14, with the killer fleeing and getting the train to Blacktown 21. There's no cop, no cap. The yeah, I'll be 007 in these comments. I know everything if I look at the comments. Listen. Young man has been murdered in Sydney's west overnight. His body was found sprawled on a footpath at Mount Druitt shortly after midnight. Very large crime scene. Detectives say that they believe the killer and maybe others involved boarded a train at Mount Druitt poli police station or Mount Druitt train station rather. Boarded. I don't even know what she's talking about a train to Blacktown and that is where they arrested an 18 year old man at around 2.30 this morning. And the beef between these two sets eventually did make its way to music far before Aussie Drill had developed its sound. There's examples in 2016 with rappers from NF14 dissing the Inner West rapping over the beat to Mob Deep Shook Ones. And over on the Inner West side you've got the likes of 3T dropping disses on the Greater West too. So while these mini music beefs were occurring, this was the same year that the police were investigating a savage beating in Mount Druitt where a 17 year old was beaten unconscious by a gang of armed thugs. An incident which, like many of the ones I'm about to discuss, was spectacularly caught on camera, but it's far too violent to show you without getting demonetized. You're gonna yeah. have to do your homework if you want to see that grisly shit. Anywho, at this I point, know. the cops begun to I'm single sorry. out the gangs in Mount Druitt as being completely out of control, suggesting frequent shootings in the area, as well as fist fights that were being uploaded to YouTube, were contributing to a spike of gang activity in the area. Meanwhile, by 2018, One Four were beginning to make waves in music, for the first time in Aussie Drill, providing a template of a legal route through music away from the streets. However, these Gs taking music seriously did not stop the bloodshed on the streets, as this feud would soon turn into a very public tragedy. When in 2018, we saw the murder of 20-year-old Tino Henry, allegedly from the inner west with ties to 21 District. 20-year-old Tino Henry had the world at his feet, but in the early hours of this morning, his promising young life ended abruptly. In this alleyway off Fitzsimmons Street in Parramatta, he was fatally... That's crazy. Like, I just listened to y'all, I mean, the Australian news reporter, she bigged him up real nice. The world at his feet, like, I like that. Like, in America... <laughs> They would have been 21 year old suspected gang member. <laughs> That's what they would have said. No doubt. 100%. Hold on. Stabbed in the chest. This incident sparked a wave of violence between the groups, which was only inflamed further by 1 4 going on to drop lyrics, directly disrespecting their fallen op. Naturally, all of this and the incidents that followed would provoke a strong response from the police of Sydney, but what couldn't be predicted is just how hard they would come at these crews, ultimately taking several of their key members off the streets with hard sentences, as well as attacking their legitimate business of making money through music. You can turn any slogan. Oh, okay, so that's what happened. 
One four just off the cusp of mainstream industry success in music would unfortunately end up losing several members over a 2018 fight. In July, months before oh. the deadly stabbing of Tino Henry, a huge brawl took place at Rooty Hill Gaming Lounge Carousel Inn. This involved Lex from 1-4, who had allegedly been kicked out of the lounge over a drunken row over a machine. Now, in what little defense I can offer to Lex, it had been reported that racial slurs had been thrown during this argument, but who knows what really went down. Whatever was said was clearly no good and retaliation was a must, with Lex coming back with YP and Selly from 1-4 armed with weapons. At this point, the lads- So Lex, YP, and Selly, okay. Proceeded to give a savage beatdown to several people in the lounge, all of which was caught extensively on camera, another shocking scene that I sadly cannot show you on YouTube. But essentially, Lex beat a man to the ground, grabbing him by the hair and taunting him to his face. YP was identified as having smashed a chair leg into the back of an op's head, and Selly was said to have pounded a man's head repeatedly with a hammer, with this vicious attack apparently leaving one of the victims unable to feel part of their face. One four gave these guys the Lil Wayne and Jewels treatment, for God's sake. With all this caught on camera, it's no surprise that these lads ended up in court sharpish without a chair leg to stand on or swing at the judge's head. 27 for life. Dang. Lex ultimately got slapped with four and a half years for instigating the fight. YP got four years for swinging the chair leg, and I assume also leaving a very unsafe three-legged chair out there for one of his ops to sit down and fall off of. But it was Selly who got the worst of it for whiling out with that hammer, with the judge dishing out a hefty 10 years. sentence. This is in 2018, they free though. Bro probably did, they both probably did two years. He probably did five. They free. They all should be free. This was a devastating blow to 1-4 as a cohesive group as well as their business, meaning that star members' appearances on songs would be limited to jailhouse phone calls like we saw at the start of the track Welcome to Prison. We're going to be missing for a little bit, but it is what it is. Like, let's come. Hey, what's good? It's double K. And just like we saw around the violent summer of 2018 in UK Drill, all of the goings on in the street would lead to huge scrutiny by the police, who would quickly crack down on both the illegal violence and the legitimate music business. In 2019, 1-4 began to have their shows cancelled by the Police, with it being claimed that the cops were pressuring venues not to host these Aussie drillers. 1-4 have suggested that the cops were really just trying to shut down their only route to making legal money. Shoot, they actually did, because I ain't heard nothing from y'all in a minute. We're on a worldwide tip. Y'all probably still doing some, like, in Australia type movement, but I, I could be wrong. And over on the 21 district side, they were seeing similar problems. And despite trying to make it clear with public statements saying that they're not criminals and that the rapping crew is no longer too late. in crime, that hasn't stopped the police from shutting down their shows and video shoots too, as they explained in this statement. But while the cops were shutting down their legitimate businesses, since the killing of Tino, skirmishes were continuing in the streets. Another incident popped off where there were numerous drive-by shootings in a 48-hour period, with speculation that the homes of rival members were targeted. Within only a month of these shootings, 21 district had released their song, The Reply, clapping back at 1-4 who had dissed Fallen Tino on their track The Message, starting that song off with audio from the news report about the 2012 shooting situation which was very similar, which may suggest that these are all somehow linked. So clearly the beef was publicly active well into 2019, but we would see the likes of Spenny from 1-4 lurking in the ops turf of Guildford on Snapchat. Look where Spenny's at tonight. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> They all got missing. To me. Now 21 district, you pussies. Fucking show to me, honey. I was there for 30 minutes. He didn't even come. Eventually, members would come face to face, leading to another mini fight outside the Westfield Parameter in June 2019, where knives were pulled out in front of shocked members of the public. But thankfully, the groups disbanded before things got serious. In the middle of a busy intersection outside Westfield Parramatta yesterday, men fight on as a crowd gathered before some of the men retreated to their car. Another man smashes the vehicle as it races around the corner. I don't even understand why one for you, one for you let 21 district. No offense, like they're both talented apparently, but like, but like you let 21 district drag you back down into some beef when you were highly elevated above them at the time. That's what I be telling people, man. The, the streets be calling, the streets calling be too hard. It be too hard. It be too hard. Like they didn't have songs with big artists, and now they going back beefing with these. Why would you beef with them? They're not even on the. If you're not on the same money level as me, as they, they this is they be so they be they thought process. If you're not getting as much money as me, I can't beef with you because you have you don't have as much to lose. You got nothing to lose. I got everything to lose. It's not even fair. Y'all can't even... 
apparently members from these groups would run into each other again later one evening at a hookah lounge in another spectacular fight where an insane they amount- They needed to show they were still involved. Listen, that's the thing. That's what they don't understand. You could be involved, but the goal is to be not, the, the goal is to get out, right? Once you've gotten out, I don't want to prove that I'm still involved. Make your assumptions. <laughs> Hey, make your, I'm, a, I'm a musician at this point. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting too much money to be playing with y'all in these streets. You feel me? Y'all have it. ...of objects and projectiles were thrown. Detectives are investigating if the same men involved in the Parramatta incident were behind another fight at Auburn last night. Then the following month, another big gang fight spilled into the streets of Sydney in July, along with a clip shared by 21 members with the suggestion that 1-4 are quick to pull out knives in fights, an apparent reference to the previous incident where a blade was pulled out at the Westfield fight. At this point, there are crews brawling publicly on the streets of Sydney nearly every week, and gang culture was permeating mainstream culture so much that the New South Wales police had to warn the National Rugby League to stop players throwing up gang signs on the pitch. But if it was bad enough losing rapping members of 1-4 to prison when they could have been making legal money on the streets, it looked like the police were going hard at targeting the non-rapping street teams of the Greater West Gangsters, with a very public arrest in 2019 of a supposedly high-ranking street figure. With this marking the beginning of a big crackdown on Aussie street crews, with the cops calling in Raptor 13, the Raptor Squad, or Strike Force Raptor, a squad of hardened Sydney cops famous for busting biker gangs. Raptor Squad, it's a bit of an unnecessarily menacing name, isn't it? Like, you're trying to catch some gangsters, not an army of pterodactyls. Anyway, the Raptors vowed to shut down Sydney's drill crews and make every aspect of their lives uncomfortable. They directly claimed responsibility for cancer. All right, that's really what they said. Hold on, in that, in the drill. In that said, he said, straight hands, no knives, like one four. Somebody in the comments said, bro, you just said your ops never lack. Hey. Ain't nothing wrong with never lacking. I do not perpetuate or um, condone any of that. I'm just saying that's what the article said. Y'all just y'all just patted your ops on the back like yeah, my ops don't never lack. That's tough. Thriller <laughs> shows, and their sergeant said that they had planned to use more serious crime prevention orders, usually reserved for biker gangs or terrorists, to shut down One Four's activities. Thankfully, today One Four is still going strong, having recently dropped their Against All Odds EP, which was fire, despite being essentially banned from performing, with the cops completely it's shutting down their national ago. tour. Meanwhile, on the other side, Twenty One District have been less musically active, but off the strength of their early tracks, I've got absolutely no doubt that with a bit of effort and backing, they could be on top musically too if they wanted to. Meanwhile, things are still going they could though like how's the rap scene in australia currently I, it's, it's fairly easy for somebody to jump in there probably and take over with a little bit of backing and a little bit of credit and with a little bit of ability and you know Going on on the streets. In July 2020, the news were reporting on a hammer attack linked to gangs from the Inner West, where rival members were forced on camera by members from the Inner West to throw up 21 gang signs and kiss their feet. Look, the thing that made people love Aussie Drill really is the music, not the antics or the violence. A lot of people have loved One Four's music without even understanding the true context of what these guys- 100%. He's right. ...have gone through. So I really hope that going forward, we hear a lot more music from both sides and less activity in the street. There's a lot of overlap between the Aussie and the UK drill movements. And if there's anything to learn from what we've got going on here, it's that eventually with enough mainstream success, you can get the cops off your back, stack that legal money, and get far away from the tough environment that made you. I hope that happens because I love 1-4 and 21 District's music, and I want to see them both flourish. Hope you enjoyed learning more about the background of Aussie drill music. I certainly enjoyed listening. I, I enjoyed it, Trap. <laughs> I enjoyed it. You kept me entertained, man. Tell her, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn your post. I'm gone.